What's going on guys, Nathaniel here. Welcome back to my channel talking about budget, personal finance, and all of this is from my perspective. This is not endorsed by anyone. This is not some get rich quick scheme. In fact, uh, this is mainly me trying to sum up how I've been an idiot over the last 12 years of my adulthood, 31 years old, and just now figuring out how to do my finances. So in an effort to be transparent, and keep myself accountable, I want to share with you what my budget looks like. This is all budget numbers that I took to my financial advisor appointment. If you haven't already seen my video where I talk about getting a financial advisor and getting on the road to a healthy personal financial level, you need to check it out. Look at my channel and see what else, see what else I've recorded out there. I guarantee you that it is a life changer. So one of the first things I talked about was getting all of your accounts and understanding where your money's going. How is your money coming into your accounts? All of this plays into how you're going to be able to set yourself up for success financially. I'm just getting around to it, like I said, and so I wanted to share with you what my finances looked like before. And in about a month's time, we'll take a look at my budget again, see where I've improved on some of my expenditures, and as well as what I've done to set myself up for some of my short-term short goals and long-term investments. So let's get started. All right, so let's jump into suspenses. First, we're gonna look at lifestyle expenses. For me, lifestyle expenses means things I need to live, AKA lifestyle. So we're talking about rent, we're talking about utilities, water, trash, clothing, food, groceries, uh, gas for getting to work. These are all things that I can't get out of. I need these to survive. Now the difference between buying generic brand cereal and Kellogg's, yeah, there may be room for further improvement and we'll look into that as the month goes on. All in all, my total expenditures for lifestyle expenses are $2,979. Is there room for improvement? I think so, and I'm going to take a look at it as this month goes on. Next are my financial planning expenses. We're talking about life insurance, we're talking about savings, we're talking about Roth IRA, and we're talking about the TSP. All of these are really important because I'm looking to these to set myself up for success, both in the short term and for retirement. And right away, upon my very first meeting with the financial advisor, I learned that I'm investing $50 less a month in my Roth IRA than I should to meet the cap for of $6,000 a year. I ended up putting $1,400 into my Roth IRA, and so now it's maxed out for the year. So that's done and dusted. That's something I didn't even have to worry about waiting until next month to accomplish. Another thing is my TSP. Because I maxed out my Roth IRA, there's an opportunity for me to give more money. And if you didn't already check out my video on why you should be investing in the TSP and the mistakes I've made, it's in there. Basically, the cap for investing in the Roth TSP is $19,000 a year, which is $13,000 more than what you can invest in the Roth IRA. So because I maxed that out, I should be really looking at adding more money into my TSP because I have that larger cap as a government employee. All in all, my expenses for Setting myself up for life are $758, and there's definitely room for improvement there as well, especially after meeting with my financial advisor where she explained some of these things to me that just didn't click before, and at 31 years old, I feel kind of like an idiot because someone younger than me had to explain what they were. Next up, we have liabilities. Basically, I have an auto loan and some other things that I can't get out of. If I had a mortgage, a mortgage would be considered a liability and it would be included there as well. So in total there, I have $1,150 that I have to pay. Moving on to income. So this one was super easy. All I had to do was look at my LES. Basically with my base pay, BAS, my OHA for being overseas, and my COLA, I came up to $9,661. Now subtract $512 a month for federal taxes, subtract $422 a month for social security, and subtract $0 a month for being a Florida resident, I ended up with $8,727 a month net income. Now at this point, before we get to the next slide, I'm sure you've been doing some of the math along the way and you're like, holy cow, 
what is this guy spending the rest of his money on? And I will tell you in a second. But first, hit the like button and subscribe if you have not already. Please, I want to reach as many people as I can with this video series, and I can only do it if you subscribe and share with your friends. And finally, we have cash flow. Basically, you take your net income and subtract all of your expenses that you can't get out of every month, and that leaves you with your unallocated income or unrealized income, whatever, whatever term you wanna use. Basically, that means this money is not being used right now. So what do you do with that money? Where's that money going? Well, I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I don't know. If I look back at my credit card statements, I'm looking at uh, like $50 here for something that I can't even remember I bought, uh, $20 for a meal here, I went and bought some beer out with some friends, you know, which is all good and fine, but could I be using that money better? And uh, actually Graham Stephan, he's another YouTuber out there, he basically explained it this way. If you were to buy, like, let's say a t-shirt that cost $20 and someone was standing at the checkout and said, I will give you $20 to not buy that t-shirt, would you take the money? Well, basically that's what you're doing when you're spending your money on things that are not important. And so now I've taken that mindset and I've been looking at some of the things I buy and I'm like, why did I spend $40 on this? Does that expense bring me joy? Does it bring me value? Well, if the answer is no, and you would rather take that $20, $30, $50 and pocket it or invest it, then you should consider not buying that item. So at the end of the day, I'm looking at this $3,800 and I'm like, well, maybe I save about a thousand of that, but where does the other money go? And so that's something where I have to take the personal accountability and say, I'm spending too much money on things that don't even matter. I don't even know what I'm spending my money on. I need to be looking at everything objectively and saying, do I really need this? And getting all of my finances in order. And so basically, that's what I've done. I hope you found this video helpful. It was a bit nerve wracking for me to put all of my personal finances out here on a video for the world to see, but I think it's going to benefit me in the long run by being a little bit more transparent and holding myself accountable with my money. And I hope it helps you spark your interest in getting your personal finances in order and taking a look at how you can save more money for your retirement and for your future. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in. I will catch you in the next one.